Hello everyone and welcome to another video. The park rating of your park is a number ranging from 0 to 999 which is an extremely important aspect of Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 and a very good indicator for how your park is doing. There are multiple different scenario goal types that require you to have at least a certain park rating and your rating influences how many guests you get and which awards you can get. But how does it work, how exactly is the park rating calculated and how does it affect the aforementioned aspects of the game? In this video I will first discuss the variables that make up the park rating, then I will show the impact the park rating has on the game and lastly I will give some tips and tricks for keeping your park rating high. Big thanks to Dirklink for looking through the code to unearth the deepest mysteries of the park rating, I've linked his original guide and his youtube channel in the description. 32 times per month or once per 12.8 seconds your park rating is calculated and the outcome depends on the following 9 variables. The number of guests in your park, the percentage of happy guests, the average ride uptime, the total ride excitement and intensity ratings, the average ride excitement and intensity ratings, the difficulty, the amount of litter, the number of lost guests and lastly the casualty penalty. There exists an excellent plugin made by Bossy called the Park Rating Inspector which breaks down your park rating into the 9 components or 11 as it splits the intensity and excitement variables and I will be using it throughout this video. Let's start with the number of guests in your park. For every 13 guests you have you get one added to your park rating. This may not seem like much but if you have 1300 guests it already gives you an extra 100 which is not bad. Unfortunately this variable maxes out after 2000 guests giving you a maximum bonus of 153. Having a large number of guests alone doesn't mean your park is any good which is why the percentage of happy guests is also very important. In fact it's by far the biggest positive contributor to your park rating. When everyone is unhappy you get 0 and then you get 6 extra for every percent of your guests that is happy until 83.3% at which point you reach the maximum bonus of 500. But what exactly counts as a happy guest? A guest's happiness value can range from 0 to 255 and if it's at least 128 which is the halfway point it is counted as happy. This corresponds to a neutral phase and a half filled happiness bar. This variable is why your park rating very often shoots up massively as soon as the first guest enters your park. In most scenarios newly spawned guests are happy enough to count as happy and when they are the only guest in your park 100% of your guests are happy giving you the entire bonus of 500. Now come 3 variables that have to do with your ride, starting with the average ride uptime. Almost every ride type has a maintenance tab which shows you a downtime percentage which is the percentage of time a ride has spent being broken down. If this is 20% the uptime is the remaining 80%. This variable averages the uptime percentages of all your rides, then multiplies it by 2 and adds that to your park rating. So if you have 3 rides at 0%, 20% and 40% downtime the average uptime is 80% and you get 160 added to your rating. There are two caveats that make this bonus easier to get. The first is that the ride downtime only has a limited history of about half a year. No matter how long a ride has been broken down for, if it manages to operate without breakdowns for half a year the downtime will be pretty much zero so you don't have to worry about permanently losing any park rating. The second caveat is that rides that cannot break down count as always having 100% uptime which includes stalls and unopened rides. So if you have 3 rides that are broken down all the time and 3 stalls you will still get half of this bonus. This is why when you build your first ride your park rating increases by 200 which is the maximum bonus you can get from this. That was the most important of the 3 ride variables and the other two both have to do with the stats of your rides. The first considers the total excitement and intensity rating of your entire park and gives you a bonus based on that. For both stats it ranges from 0 when the stat is 0 to 100 when the stat is 80 or higher. 
For example, these 10 twists combined with the wooden coaster have a total of 23.8 excitement and 24 intensity. Divide this by 80 and then multiply it by 100 and you'll see that you get 29 and 30 added to your park rating from the excitement and intensity ratings respectively. It's not just the total ratings that matter, as the third ride related variable is the average excitement and intensity ratings. These need to be as close to 3.68 and 5.20 respectively as possible. If they are exactly that, you will get the maximum bonus of 50 per stat. The further away you are, the lower this bonus, but it decreases very slowly. For every 4 points you are away, you only lose 25 park rating. So even with just a merry-go-round, with 1.05 excitement and 0.60 intensity, you already get 55 out of the 100 available points for this variable. This effect is so small that it's practically never worth it to pay any attention to it. Unless you build a very extreme park, you won't lose more than 50 points, and often far less, as even this extreme height still gets a nice 69 out of 100 points. Those were all the bonuses to the park rating, and if you maximize them all, you will have a park rating of 1153. However, the maximum park rating is only 999, and if your park rating is above that, it will just be rounded down. This means you have 154 points of leeway, allowing you to get to the maximum without needing to fully optimize your park. We now have 4 variables left, and each penalizes your park rating in a different way. The first one is the option to make the park rating harder to increase and maintain. If this is disabled, nothing happens, and if it's enabled, you lose 100 park rating permanently. It's still possible to get to 999 in parks where this is enabled, but it's a bit more difficult. The next variable is the amount of litter in your park. Both vomit and dropped items count as litter here, but vandalized path ornaments do not. The only effect broken benches have on your park rating is that they make the guests unhappy. A piece of litter that gets created has no effect initially, but but once it's been on the ground for more than 3 minutes and 12 seconds, which is about half a month, it will subtract 4 from your park rating. The maximum penalty for litter is 600, which you reach after 150 pieces that are old enough. This age function was bugged in RCT2 Vanilla, as while the function did exist, it didn't work. As a result, all litter gave your park rating a penalty as soon as it was created. You can see this effect in action very well in the Six Flags Magic Mountain scenario. If you open it in RCT2 Vanilla, the initial park rating will be 697, with a litter penalty of 440. But if you open it in Open RCT2 version 0.3.5 or later, it will be 140 points higher, as 35 of the 113 litter pieces are still too new to penalize the park rating. If you fire all handymen and use cheats to prevent new litter from being dropped, the park rating will quickly drop to roughly 697 as the litter ages. And now we're at the big one, the killer of park ratings, the one that makes you lose scenarios, lost guests. The first 25 lost guests in your park don't have any effect, but starting from the 26th, they each subtract 7 from your park rating. And this has no limit. 100 lost guests will subtract 700, and 1000 lost guests will subtract 7000 park rating. But when does a guest count as lost? They have to be leaving the park and have a lost countdown value of less than 90. How this countdown value exactly works is a bit complicated and a topic for another video, but basically it resets to a higher value when a guest decides to do something and then slowly decreases over time. If they cannot find something, then eventually this value will drop below 90, and if they then decide to leave the park, or if they're already leaving the park, they will count as being lost. This is why your park rating takes a nosedive about 2 weeks after you block off the park exit. That's the point at which any guests that want to go home start being counted as lost. And finally, there is the casualty penalty. Every guest that drowns subtracts 25 from your park rating, up to a limit of 1000, which is reached after 40 drowned guests. If a train on a ride crashes and the current casualty penalty is 500 or lower, you will lose another 200 park rating. 
This only happens if there were guests on the train, so you don't lose any park rating from crashing a ride in test mode or if it just so happened to be empty. It also doesn't matter how many guests died, a train with 2 guests and one with 20 guests both give you a penalty of 200. Over time the casualty penalty will decrease, but how fast it decreases strangely depends on whether the scenario you're playing has money enabled. If it does have money then the casualty penalty is lowered by 7 at the start of every day, so it takes 4 days to recover the park rating from a single guest dying. And there is about 4.5 months of recovery time if you max out the penalty by drowning hundreds of guests. For some reason though, if you play a scenario without money, like Extreme Heights, the penalty withers away over 5 times as fast with 40 per day. So even if you drown the entire population of Monaco, your park rating will be fully recovered in less than a month. And those were all the variables that make up the park rating. 9 in total, of which 4 are really important and worth paying attention to. We'll talk about the best ways to keep your park rating high later, but first I want to talk about the things that are influenced by your rating. The first is the guest generation. How fast guests generate is determined by a value called the guest probability, which in turn is mostly determined by your park rating. In fact, the guest probability is simply your park rating minus 150, with a lower bound of 50 and an upper bound of 700. After that it can be influenced by a few multiplicative factors such as the soft guest cap, but your base guest probability is determined by your park rating and your park rating alone. Therefore, it's really important to keep your park rating high, especially in parks where the guests pay for the entrance, as when your park rating drops, your guest influx drops, which causes your income to dry up as well. The guest generation can be influenced further by awards, and the park rating is a parameter in one of the 17 different available awards. You qualify for the most disappointing park award if at least half of your rides have a popularity of below 6 out of 255, and if your park rating is below 650. This is a negative award which reduces the guest generation by 25%, so that's another reason to keep your rating high. The last thing that the park rating is involved in is the goal of many scenarios. The most common one is requiring a certain amount of guests at the end of a certain year combined with needing a park rating of at least 600. This is done so that you cannot just close off the park exit and trap the guests in the park, you need both guests and a well functioning park. The other goal type that the park rating is involved in is one where you need to get a certain amount of guests and aren't allowed to ever let your park rating fall below 700. These scenarios replace having a deadline with having a stricter park rating requirement. Your park is permanently opened and if you let your rating go below 700 you fail the scenario and your park gets permanently closed with no way to reopen it outside of cheating. There is some leeway though, and you don't immediately lose as soon as you hit 699 park rating. At the start of every day your park rating is checked, and if it is below 700 you will get a warning that you have 4 weeks left to raise it back above 700. If you haven't raised it back up a week later you will get another warning that you only have 3 weeks left, and the same for 2 weeks and just 1 week. After that final week your park will be closed down, and you will fill the scenario. Note that these weeks are different and completely independent from the 4 weeks that every month is divided into. These are just 4 periods of 7 days, so you have 28 days or a little under a month to fix your park. If at any time during this warning period your park rating is above 700 at the start of a day it will reset and you have saved your park from imminent doom. There is a grace period of a month at the start of every scenario before this condition comes into effect, so you have almost two entire months to get your park rating up to and over 700. If you don't manage that at all, your park will be shut down at the earliest possible date of April 29th year 1. Now that we know the massive impact that a bad park rating can have on your park, let's take a look at some tips and tricks to keeping that baby high. 
Earlier I mentioned that you only really need to pay attention to 4 out of the 9 variables. This is because the other 5 come naturally, have small impacts or are outside of your control. The number of guests and total ride stats will slowly increase as your park gets bigger. The average ride uptime will always be decent if you just have a few mechanics, the average ride stats barely has any impact and you can't change the difficulty at all. This leaves the percentage of happy guests, the amount of litter, the number of lost guests and the casualty penalty as the important factors. Let's discuss them one by one, starting with the happy guests. This is rarely the sole cause of a low park rating, with the exception of overcrowding. Litter and being lost also makes guests unhappy, but those things themselves impact the rating too, so we'll talk about those later. If your park rating is decreasing and you don't know why, it's a good idea to go to the guest list and see what they are thinking about. If more than roughly 20% of your guests are complaining about overcrowding, then it's most likely that that is the primary cause. You can decrease overcrowding by building more paths and connections between different areas of your park. Sometimes this isn't enough or isn't possible at all, at which point you can go to plan B, entertainers. Entertainers make guests happier and if you have enough of them you can entirely negate the happiness penalty of overcrowding and have a great park rating even in a park with 200 guests on every path tile. Another situation where they come in useful is scenarios where you need to keep the park rating above 700. If the guests come in very unhappy you can use entertainers to quickly increase their happiness so that you can reach the threshold of 700 park rating in time. Entertainers can also negate the happiness penalty from litter, but they don't prevent the penalty from litter itself. The obvious solution to this is to hire more handymen and zone them in places with a lot of litter or vomit. Preventing a problem is better than solving it though, so building plenty of litter bins around shops and providing benches and first aid stalls near nauseous rides is a very good idea. You can take prevention to the extreme and only build rides with low nausea ratings and only build food and drink stalls that don't produce any waste. I was quite surprised that there are 14 food stalls that give no litter, which is more than I was expecting. Unfortunately there are no drink stalls that do the same, so if you want to cater to all your guests needs you will need to place some bins and hire some handymen. Vandalism is created by vandals and guests can only turn into vandals if they are unhappy and there is a lot of litter. So if you do a good job at preventing litter then you will very likely never see any vandalism. As mentioned before, vandalism itself doesn't hurt your rating, but it does make guests less happy, so if you do see it, it's a good idea to fix it. Unhappiness and litter can reduce your park rating quite a lot, but they cannot obliterate it like lost guests can. There are two ways for guests to get lost. They either cannot navigate your path layout or they are trapped somewhere. If your park rating randomly decreases to zero, a very likely culprit is a right exit line that isn't connected to the main path, trapping all the guests that went on the ride. Not only do they get lost and want to go home, but they'll also become unhappy, which further decreases your park rating. When you release them and they finally exit your park, the rating will shoot back up immediately. If you have trouble finding where you accidentally trapped some guests, you can go to the guest list and search for guests that think that they're lost and see where those guests are. A bad path layout is a bit more difficult to fix and can have a variety of causes. First I recommend not using any wide paths. Double paths are mostly fine but combined with a bad layout they sometimes do still give issues where single wide paths wouldn't have. Secondly you should avoid any dead ends which includes setups like this. They're not always problematic but if you want to be sure then you should loop every new path back to another bit of path. These loops must not be too large and if they are you should build a new connection in the middle. Queue lines should always connect to a main loop and exit paths should ideally only be a few tiles long and if they're longer you should block them off with a no entry sign. 
If you adhere to all of these rules, you're unlikely to get many lost guests. And even if you only use them as guidelines, you'll be fine in most situations. Having a few small dead ends or longer exit paths is usually not a problem. Don't see these rules as super strict requirements that you're not allowed to ever deviate from, but rather as guidelines and a checklist to see where the issue is in case guests do get lost. Lastly, there is the casualty penalty. Preventing drownings is really easy, as long as you're careful when removing parts over water and don't have a murder addiction, but preventing ride crashes is a little bit more difficult. Some ride types, like the bobsled, can fly off the tracks if they go over a hill too fast. The trap is that they go faster with guests, so even if they test properly, they might still crash later. To prevent this, I recommend not taking any hills faster than 40 km per hour. The same goes the other way around. If a train on any ride type just barely makes a hill or a loop with a minimum speed of something like 3 km per hour, there is a chance it won't make it sometime in the future, so a minimum speed of about 10 km per hour is recommended as well. A brakes failure will cause your ride to crash if the train enters the station too fast and hits another train. You can prevent this by only having a single train, having a train enter the station very slowly or using block brakes. Having enough mechanics to inspect every ride every 10 minutes is also a good way to lower the odds of a breakdown happening in the first place. And that is how the park rating in Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 works. It is calculated using 9 different variables, of which 4 are really important, and it mainly impacts your guest generation and certain goal types. To learn about another important number in Rollercoaster Tycoon 2, the park value, you can click right here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.